I'm gonna share the best iPhone camera settings for high quality video that will level up your iPhone filming to help you get the best results really, really quickly. Now I'm gonna take you through the settings using an iPhone 14, which at the time of filming, this is the latest iPhone. If you're not on the 14, you can still follow along because a lot of these settings are still going to apply, but you might not have access to all of them. Okay, so you wanna open up settings, you wanna scroll down to camera, and this is where all of your camera settings are. And the first thing we wanna set is our video recording format. So if we go to formats at the top, and then this is the first big decision you'll need to make. You get to choose, are you gonna record in high efficiency or in most compatible? Now, for me personally, I do leave this on most compatible because it is going to give you a video file which is gonna be the most compatible across a lot of different editing tools and apps. So if you do find the videos you're creating on your iPhone don't work properly in your editing tool, then this is where you wanna change this first. Now there are specific times where you will wanna be using that high efficiency codec. The first one is if you don't have much storage available on your phone. So the high efficiency codec does give you a smaller file size because it is more compressed. But also if you wanna use the cinematic mode or you wanna shoot in 4K 60 frames per second, if you wanna shoot in HDR or high dynamic range mode, or you wanna shoot super slow mode, 250, 40 frames per second at 1080p. For those settings to work, you will need to be on the high efficiency codec. And again, outside of that, I would suggest that you have it off and I normally leave it off. Now, depending on your device, you can see that we've got the option to enable or disable Apple ProRes recording as well. So if you are someone that really wants to get the most professional grade footage out of your iPhone, then you will wanna have this enabled. But again, I don't think this is for most people. The file sizes are going to be ridiculously huge. And it does say down the bottom here, for one minute of HD footage in this ProRes format, it's gonna take up 1.7 gig of storage. So if you've got a phone with 128 gig or 256, you're gonna burn through that pretty quick. So this is something that again, I leave off. But I wanna stress here that this doesn't mean that you're not able to create amazing looking videos. The videos that are still coming out of this are still going to look amazing, especially if you're gonna be uploading them to places like YouTube. If you're creating a documentary or a film and you're using your phone, then that might be when you wanna have this on. Okay, if we go back out of this now, then this is where we can set our recording formats. So we've got our first one here, record video. And this is where you can choose, are you gonna shoot in 4K or 1080? Now, personally, I think you should be shooting in 4K wherever possible so that you've got the ability to still release a 1080p video, but you've got that higher resolution, higher quality so that you can do things like zoom in on your footage if you need to, but also you could release the 4K video as well. So the default for most people here would probably be to leave this at 4K 30 frames per second. But if you are in a PAL region, so Japan, Australia, Europe, and other Others, then you can enable PAL frame rates here too, things like 25 frames per second or 50 frames per second. Now, if we scroll down, you can see you've got the option to enhance the stabilization. So if you're creating footage where you're gonna be walking around and you need that extra smooth level of stabilization, then you can enable that in here. HDR video is something that will only work in that high efficiency video setting. This is something that catches a lot of people out when they're recording. It looks fine if you're playing it back on your phone or another device, but if you go to drop it into your editing software and the footage isn't recognized as being HDR footage, then it can make your footage look really washed out. And there's extra steps that you've got to take to fix that. So this is another one that unless you specifically need to be filming in HDR, high dynamic range, I would suggest that you leave it off to save yourself some future headaches. Auto frame rate is one I would strongly recommend that you turn off. Basically, if you're in a low light situation, then it's gonna drop the frame rate below what you've set it at to add more light into your shot, but it can also add a ton of motion blur and make the video look really bad. So I'd suggest you leave this one off too. So if we go back to our camera settings now, now personally, I like to leave the record stereo sound setting enabled. And then if we come down to preserve settings, you can preserve the last mode that you used in your camera app. So that it's going to remember those settings next time. So those will overwrite your default settings so that if you made any changes, if you close the app, open it again, then those settings are still going to be applied. Now, the only one of these that I really leave enabled is the top one camera mode. So that if I am using the video camera and then close it, that it's going to reopen the app in that same camera mode. So if we go back and we scroll down to composition, this is where you can enable or disable a grid. I do find it's pretty handy to have that on screen. So that's something I do leave enabled. You can also mirror your front camera if you're gonna be using that front selfie camera and it's backwards for you and you wanna see it the other way around, you can enable that there too. Now, if we go ahead and open up the camera app now, switch it over to video mode, then there's a couple of extra settings in here you should know about. At the top, we can tap to switch between HD, 4K, and we can even tap to change through the different frame rates there too. 
At any time, if we tap on the screen, it's going to take a focus reading. So it's gonna auto focus on whatever it is that we've tapped on, but it's also doing a brightness adjustment at that point too, to set the exposure level for what it is you tapped on. Now, after you've tapped, we can overwrite that brightness by swiping up to increase the brightness or swiping down to lower the brightness. But that doesn't lock it at this point. It's just set it as a good starting point. If we wanna lock our focus and lock our exposure, then we do the same. We tap and hold until we see at the top, it says AE, auto exposure, and AF, auto focus, lock. So this tells you that your focus and exposure is locked. And again, we can adjust the brightness up and down by swiping up and down on the screen. Now, whether you are locking your exposure or not, there's one more setting in here, which I do find is pretty handy. Up in the top left-hand corner, you've got your exposure override. So if we press on that, then down the bottom, we get a slider bar. Now, if you're not seeing this setting on your phone, you can swipe up and then hit the button that has the plus and the minus icon on it to enable this. And then from there, we can swipe left or right to increase the brightness or darkness. But this is now saved as a default adjustment to whatever the camera is automatically detecting. So let's say we set this to negative 0.7. So we've darkened our shot off a little bit. But now every time we're using the camera app, the auto adjustment from the phone is now going to be a little bit darker 0.7 than it was originally. So if you're finding that there's shots that you're taking, especially in low light conditions, if some things are too bright and other things are too dark, then you can actually manually override as a default setting now with this exposure compensation. But it's also important to remember to put this back afterwards, or you'll find that all of your shots are going to be darker in this scenario. Now, if you're someone who's looking for more advanced features, more advanced settings and controls, and really DSLR or mirrorless camera-like settings on your iPhone, then that's where adding a third-party camera app could be the best option for you. A lot of these apps will even let you record at higher quality formats too. So if that's something you wanna find out more about, then check out the video that is linked on screen where we share the best camera apps for iPhone. And as always, don't forget to check out the links in the description. We've got a bunch of resources down there to help you too. See you in the next one.